Uh, it's going to be a big day on Capitol Hill and tomorrow. Congressman Michael Waltz, member of the House Intel Committee, joins us now. Uh, Congressman, good to see you. Uh, John Durham comes to testify on Capitol Hill today to expand on his, uh, I think, four-year investigation and report that's come out, and a lot of people want to dismiss it. What's going to be your focus today? Well, Brian, look, I mean, there is clear rot uh, in the senior levels of the Department of Justice. President Trump was right. This was a hoax. Uh, this crossfire hurricane was a farce. Uh, and once again, uh, we have the powers of the state being directed back then uh, at a presidential campaign and then at a sitting president himself. And, Brian, what I'm going to be drilling down on is the fact that they all knew uh, Brennan, Clapper, yes. Comey, McCabe, uh, all of them, uh, Loretta Lynch, all of them, they knew before Trump was elected this, uh, this surveillance of a presidential campaign should have never been started in the first place. Uh, but then uh, how the, the Bureau and the Department of Justice let it go on on a sitting president and drug the country through the mud, damaged our ability uh, uh, to, to interact on the international stage and you know, damaged the president and damaged trust in, uh, from the American people into our law enforcement institutions in a way that I don't know that will ever, uh, will ever be restored. Congressman, uh, Donald Trump was on with Brett Baer last night. I'm not sure if you saw the whole interview, but he was slamming Biden's foreign policy and saying that China never would have uh, sent that spy balloon if he were in office, talked about Ukraine and Russia, that Russia never would have invaded if he were in office. Listen to what he said about the spy balloon. They wouldn't have ever had a spy balloon if I was president. There wouldn't be a spy balloon over our country. That spy balloon was going right over our nuclear sites, taking pictures. And we killed it after it had already it was leaving. It was going back home to China, wherever it was going. But we shot it down over the ocean after it had done all of its work. You know, they don't keep it on the balloon and then you pick it up. That stuff is sent back to China instantaneously as it's taken. So a statement like that is so stupid. They've taken pictures of every one of our nuclear facilities in the Midwest, where we have a lot where they know better than anybody that we have a lot. And you're saying that wouldn't happen under you? They wouldn't have ever done it, no. They wouldn't have ever done it, no. President Xi and I had a very strong relationship, just like I did with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Do you agree with that? If, if President Trump were in office when that spy balloon were coming closer to the United States, would he have shot it down or, you know, intervened, or would they have even sent it yeah, at all? I do, Ainsley. I think it would have been shot down over the Pacific Ocean, not the Atlantic. Uh, and it certainly wouldn't have been allowed to linger over our missile silos, our nuclear command and control center, and a stealth bomber base uh, f for five days. Because I think, you know, what, what President Trump is speaking to is right now our adversaries don't believe that there's any consequences for their bad actions. In fact, our adversaries have seen time and time again under Biden, they get rewarded for their bad actions from the colonial pipeline hack and Putin gets a summit with Biden afterwards uh, to what we're seeing right now with Blinken in Beijing uh, after harassing our ships, our planes, breaking into our bases, putting spy bases in Cuba, the spy balloon. Our secretary of state goes over on bended knee. And look, there's a lot of people who say, Diplomacy, you always have to move forward, you always have to talk. Absolutely, but you can do that at lower levels. When you see our Secretary of State going the way he just did, that actually invites aggression. President Trump knew that how that deterrence kept the peace uh, and that our adversaries believing there would be serious consequences to their interests under his watch was how wars were prevented uh, during his time in, as president. Congressman, let me ask you one more why on that question. So President Trump suggests under his administration there would have been no spy balloon. He's also suggested there wouldn't have been an invasion of Ukraine by Vladimir Putin. You agree, at least on the level of the spy balloon, that it would not have happened. The because you gave us is because the world responds to perceived lack of consequences. So the one more why I want to ask you is why do you think China thinks there will be no consequences? Do you think they think this is just simply a weak administration? Or, in fact, is there some, some knowledge that the president of the United States, it's hard to ignore that there is an investigation into whether or not he's been compromised by previous pay for play deals in Ukraine and perhaps in China. Do they think, yeah, they'll not do anything because he's on our team? 
Well, I think it's a combination of, of both, frankly. I think the Chinese know uh, that Biden, which he, which he has said, believes that if we can just engage economically, uh, that if we can just stay coupled, that eventually good things will happen, that eventually uh, China will change politically. It's that old thinking. Right. It's the op-ed that Representative Gallagher had of uh, that zombie approach uh, that won't, just won't go away, and they won't recognize the Chinese Communist Party is in a Cold War with the United States because they want the world that we wish we were in, that they wish we were in, not, not the right. reality that, that we're actually facing. The Wall Street Journal has a story today that not only does China have a presence in Cuba, they're expanding four new bases in Cuba. Why would we allow that? And their comeback is, hey, you have bases in Taiwan, we're going to put bases in Cuba. <laughs> Number one, it backs up why we didn't support the revolution that was taking place there a couple of years ago. And right. number two is we're just That's allowing right. to expand. They're daring us to do something. Look, you guys, you, you've nailed it. Uh, you know, you, you, you're hitting the nail on the, uh, on the head. I mean, at the end of the day, this is our adversaries smell weakness in this White House. They are going to continue to push and get as much as they can. We need a new Monroe doctrine. Uh, we need our adversaries to feel consequences. Uh, and uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is what happens when the United States is no longer respected as a global leader. And when you have Xi yeah. right now saying, Democracy's on the decline. The United States is on the decline. Uh, capitalism doesn't work, and you better side with us and not right. them. Meanwhile, it's them that their economy is the one that's sucking wind right now, underperforming in almost every aspect. Unemployment at 20 percent from 18 to 35 year olds. They're having they're economically vulnerable, even though they're giving out the different uh, different air. Let's say, yeah. Yeah, no, but that's right. But there's a lot of people that believe uh, that she will accelerate his plans on Taiwan and become more aggressive as he has problems uh, as he has problems at home. So we are in a period of maximum danger right now. And meanwhile, this is no time to underfund our military I and know. to take the military's focus off of deterring wars. How you stop wars from happening uh, is appearing to be the biggest, baddest guy on the block. And what we should learn from Ukraine is arm our allies beforehand, not after they've been invaded and, uh, and after whole cities have been devastated. Yeah, we can learn that when it comes to Taiwan. Thank you so much, Congressman. Thanks, Congressman. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.